If you've been on the internet any time in the past couple of weeks, you've probably seen this. It's a fish zooming through a tube, going over a dam, and then flying out the other side. It's known as the Salmon Cannon, and it has, not surprisingly, sparked a lot of jokes and memes online, and not even for the first time. Back in 2014, John Oliver took the cannon to its most absurd extreme by using it to assault celebrities with flying fish. And while it seems like a really fun kind of water slide, the Salmon Cannon is actually designed to address a pretty challenging problem. How do you move fish from one side of a dam to another? To find out more about this unconventional looking means of fish transport, we spoke with a fisheries researcher at the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. My name is Allison Colatello and I'm a research scientist and project manager here at Pacific Northwest National Lab. A lot of the work that I do revolves around how hydropower impacts fish populations. So obviously the salmon cannon has garnered a lot of attention on social media, mostly because it looks kind of silly, but it serves a really important function, right? So what, what is that function? The salmon cannon, or the whoosh fish transport system, is a relatively new technology that's been developed to move fish around barriers like hydroelectric dams. Hydropower is one of our most important renewable resources, but it also creates a blockade or a barrier. Fish have different life histories, so they're going to different habitats throughout their life because of different critical steps. As they develop salmon, they need to go to the ocean and return American shad on the east coast of the United States. They also have a large migration to the ocean and back during their life. American eels are also something that is really popular in the news right now. They're actually the opposite of salmon and shad. They're born in the ocean, come to fresh water, and then they return to the ocean to spawn. They need these fishways to be able to pass safely through barriers and be able to return to their spawning grounds. How does the salmon cannon work both from sort of a practical standpoint and then just mechanistically? What we've seen going viral in some of the videos um, online recently has been somebody actually hand loading the fish into, a, into the accelerator or that cannon part of it. Um, there is a newer version of the technology that PNNL evaluated in 2017 uh, where the fish are able to swim up, uh, similar to a fish ladder, a fish way, and enter into that, into that accelerator system more volitionally, so without being hand loaded into it. Once the fish swim up that fish way, they enter into this chamber where there's a series of cameras that take pictures from lots of different angles and, um, and they have some computer algorithms that assess the size of the fish and then in split seconds, less than a second, they route fish to the different um, tubes based on how big those fish are. Big fish go to the big tube, the little fish go to the little tube, but once the fish gets into that tube, there's kind of a tight seal formed around the fish. The inside of the tube is lightly misted with water, so it, it has a lubrication associated with it. They add um, some air from behind, a blower, which uh, pushes the fish gently through the tube. Kind of like when you go to the bank and they send the checks <laughs> inside. Prior to the advent of the salmon cannon, what are the other major categories of, of fish transport? What are the alternatives? I think the one that most people will recognize is fish ladders. They have different designs, but generally they're kind of pools that the fish are jumping into and swimming through. We also have fish elevators where fish will swim into a funneled area, kind of like a bucket, and then they're essentially hoisted and dumped on the other side of the barrier. We also have climbing ramps for uh, things like eels and lamprey that tend to like less water, but structure that they can grab onto and then trap and haul where fish are kind of funneled, corralled, and loaded into a truck, and then they're driven around a barrier. If this thing's a cannon, artillery sounds kind of dangerous. <laughs> is, do we have any sense of whether this is harmful to the fish in any way? In 2014, we looked really closely at the external injuries to the fish, and we used a chemical called fluorescein to look at that. That's a chemical that's often used in crime scene investigations to look for latent traces of blood. Fish are coated in a thin layer of epithelial cells, so very similar to our eyes or our mouths, anywhere where we're producing mucus, essentially. If there's any damage to that, there'd be blood, not necessarily in volumes that we would be able to visually see. So fluorescein is really helpful in looking for those latent things, things that we're not able to detect with the human eye. We also looked for any large macroscopic injury, so anything that we could visually detect. And we looked at effects on the reproduction of those fish, and we looked at their stress levels. All of those were comparable in 2014 to trap and haul. It wasn't that it was non-existent, but it was comparable to the way that we commonly move fish. 
it sounds like there are multiple ways to ask the question, does this hurt the fish, right? There's sort of, there's sort of physical harm, there is sort of reproductive harm that's related to their overall fitness, right, and, and fecundity as a species. So it's, it's a complex question, right? It's not as simple as like, oh, they're coming out the other side okay. Yeah, that's an absolutely good point. So looking at physical damage, looking at reproductive health, uh, also looking at stress levels, which can lead to long-term issues or, or delayed death as a, as a result of passing through any kind of passage system. We only looked at the, the short-term effect. So fish moving through the tube, what was happening in the few hours or a couple days after their passage through the system. But there is definitely a need to look at it from a longer perspective, and there's multitudes of studies that could be done to follow up on that. What makes fish transport such a big challenge? I think part of the challenge is that we have close to 30,000 species of fish globally, and all of those fish have very different characteristics. They have different swimming abilities, different sizes, different life history patterns, so they're going to different habitats at different times. So one size might not fit all. I think that's the biggest challenge, is trying to find something that can incorporate that variability in the different species of fish that we have, but also something that will work effectively and is cost effective. And that sort of leads into the next question, which is why aren't there more salmon cannons, or why don't we see them in more places? Whenever we have new technologies, we want to make sure that we're not impacting the resource that they might be interacting with. And so there's a need for additional studies to really evaluate this, and they just take a long time to do, so innovation can't move quickly sometimes. Well, thank you so much for talking with us. Thank you very much.